What's up guys, this is Anthony from Hawkeye Rods. I'm here today at West Shore Mazda. Nawaf has given us the 2021 Mazda CX-9 Grand Touring in your front wheel drive. This one's in your jet black. New for this year is a carbon addition, upgraded technology, rework safety, premium interior without that luxury price tag. That's what Mazda gives you. It is a sophisticated performance and perfect harmony, but is the engine powerful enough against the Kia Telluride, the Honda Pilot. Will this CX-9 artful design check all of your boxes? Luxury crossover, sporty SUV, the dynamics of a Mazda ride. We're gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. Mazda CX-9 gets the chrome inserts in your in-large grille. I like how they have the camera tucked underneath the Mazda badging. And I also like how the chrome integrates into your LED headlights. These are projected beams for your low, your high, daytime running, auto leveling, directional adaptive with your auto high beams. So you're getting all the luxury essence with the Mazda line, again, at a significant discounted price compared to the luxury line. I like how they have the chrome on this large spoiler, ground clearance at 8.8 .8 inches, and it just flares out at 77.5 inches with a height of 67.6 inches. I wish the vents were functional down here, but I do like all the curvature and the simple yet signature look from the Mazda line that integrates over your fenders, filling the 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels machine finished. The front disc reading is at 12.6 inches. Your rear is at 12.8 inches. Independent McPherson strut front suspension, independent multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have your coil springs, anti-roll bars, G vectoring control plus. That's gonna help with cornering through engine torque and brake pressure. I like that they have the chrome and the signature line structure on this CX-9 because all over the window trims it gives that luxury flair and that's what the GT is all about and even on the lower sills and I like the fact that they keep the matte black over all of the fenders so you don't have to worry or be concerned about rock chips a length at 199.4 inches with a wheelbase at 115.3 inches. The CX-9 keeps that traditional SUV look but the curvature that goes all the way into the rear with the lower spoiler lip. Shark fin antenna, your LED combination tail lights. The chrome comes into the rear and keeps that luxury flare. Front and rear parking sensors, they're tucked. You can barely see them with the matte black. I do like how they keep that concealed with a 360 degree reverse camera towing up to 3,500 pounds trailer sway control, dual chrome exhaust finishers. And I like this because it keeps that Mazda performance drive when you're looking at the vehicle at all four corners. Power tailgate to go inside to your cargo at 14.4 cubic feet. It's a low loading floor, storage underneath the floor with a 12 volt spare tire, third row split folds at a 50-50, cargo to the second row or your captain chairs at 38.2 cubic feet, fold them down to max the cargo at 71.2 cubic feet. The Mazda CX-9 performance is back with a 2.5 liter Skyactiv i4 turbocharged engine producing 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque with premium fuel. If you opt for regular, it will produce 227 horsepower with 310 pound-feet of torque Front wheel drive paired to a six speed automatic transmission, a zero to 60 at seven seconds. Quarter mile at 15.4 seconds. Styling that meets performance against other seven seater CUVs that are not in touch with the road, but the CX-9 is family with it. Safety will include your blind spot monitoring, lane departure, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, advanced smart city braking, and smart city brake support reverse. 
Mazda Radar Cruise Control with Stop and Go. Let me know what you think about the 2021 Mazda CX-9 Grand Touring as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Mazda CX-9, you're gonna get 40.1 inches of headroom, 41 inches of legroom, black leather, bucket front seat, 10-way power adjustments for the front. They're heated, perforated, and I like the feel to them. A leatherette, bi-level dashboard with new patterns, aluminum trim accents, new 10.25 infotainment. It's non-touch, unfortunately. You have to do everything through your multi-function control knob, which is a rotary knob, pretty simple. You just click onto your home button and you can just scroll through your navigation, communication, entertainment, information, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, HD Radio, Mazda Connect, Bose 12 speakers, and you can see them on the dashboard to give that luxury flair with the center point to surround technology. You're gonna get your QI wireless charger. You have your tri-climate control, your sport mode, and I like the piano black and the high gloss all in the center here with the metal around it. Just gives that luxury flair. Opening up in here, you're gonna have some USB ports, some more storage. As for the elbows, it's gonna be soft on both sides. You'll get your leather wrap steering wheel, cross stitch, multi-function with the paddle shifters, your gauge cluster is analog. We do have a heads up display, cup holders. You can fit a 16.9 ounce water bottle with no problem. You can fit a 20 ounce without any issue. For the door panel, the aluminum inlays come with the contrast stitching, one touch up and down for all the windows. And I like the metal that goes around it with the Bose stereo system. And you can fit probably three to four 16.9 ounce water bottles. We do have a sunroof. Let's check out the back seats. For the back seats or the second row, I'm at 38.5 inches of headroom, 39.4 inches of legroom. The nice thing about it is you can recline these and move them forward as well. So you can have plenty of space for the third row. And reclining wise, a lot of space as you can see, and you can also move it all the way back. So that way you have optimal space for the second row. You're gonna have two tiers of storage behind both of the front seats, your third climate control and heated captain chairs. You got your cup holders here in the center. You can fit about a 20 ounce water bottle and you got two USB ports, which is efficient for the second row. As for the elbows, it is soft on both sides. You have your manual sunshades for the second row. On that door panel, the aluminum inlays come in with the one touch up and down. The Bose stereo system comes in to play and you can fit two to three 16.9 ounce water bottles. Another nice aspect is if you want to go into the third row easy with the car in park, you can just walk through the alley. Let's check out the third row. For the third row, I'm at 35.4 inches of headroom, 29.7 inches of legroom. I have the seat in the position all the way back, but if I adjust it forward like I was telling you, I have sufficient room to fit two people back here. Headroom would not be a problem. There's just no area to put your elbow here. As for this side, it's gonna be pretty hard texture. You do have a cup holder and a charging port, which is a USB, in an area that can fit a small cell phone. So I do like the fact that you have connectivity all the way into the third row. There is no air vent, so if you are at a sit still and you don't have it set at a lower temperature, it will be a little bit hotter in the third row. Taking the Mazda CX-9 out for our test run. Some nice things is this is not a standard car. It's not a luxury car. It's kind of an in-between, but it gives you full luxury amenities. And when I'm talking about this, it literally is like I'm almost in an Audi, an Acura, you know, an Infiniti, even I would say a little bit of essence of Mercedes Benz inside with the way it feels for the soft textures throughout the cabin. Now this vehicle has a lot of different competitors, but primarily it's going against your Honda Pilot and your Kia Telluride, which I think this is, you know, it's not that long of a vehicle. So this is considered a larger vehicle, but yet it's kind of a mid-size vehicle. So I like the stance of it. It doesn't have a six cylinder engine. So that is something that we're gonna see how it is with performance because a lot of the competitors would have at least a six cylinder. This is an I-4 turbocharged. So is it gonna be enough? I'm gonna give it a little go and I mean, it gets up and goes. Again, I think the size and the weight of the vehicle is really gonna play a huge factor when we're taking consideration the size of the engine. Going to do a U-turn here, trying to do it at more or less a stop, and this is the nice thing because it's not so long. About two and a half to three lanes, giving it some gas, and it throws you back pretty good. I mean, the torque is there. The horsepower, I think it's good 
for the size of the vehicle. So I do feel that it's sufficient. Independent suspension also helps because that gives that Mazda performance driven line. Now I do like the feel too, like the seats and just everything that you're comfortable when you sit. Brakes, it does a very good job and it's actually pretty quiet for the most part except for when you're giving it some gas you will hear the engine rev up but for the most part you don't really hear too much wind noise so they really do have good dampers set in the cx9 250 horsepower with premium fuel here we go with the paddle shifter sport mode livens up really good it actually feels almost like a v6 which is crazy they really have torqued it good when you put it into sport mode. If you don't use the sport mode, it will make it a little bit heavier for you to push on the gas pedal. But when you put it on sport, it livens it up and it's ready to just rock and roll. So I do like the fact that the functionality does help with changing the ratios on the gears and it just makes it a little bit easier for you in performance. If you put it into your regular driving, you're gonna hit a lower RPM so you're gonna get the optimal gas consumption. Now there is three things that I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this vehicle. So to start off right out of the box, three things that I like you're getting full luxury lines for a price tag that is sufficiently inexpensive for what you're getting it's awesome the second thing that I like all the tech that you're getting I know it's not touchscreen however you are getting your Apple CarPlay Android Auto navigation every single thing that luxury lines don't necessarily always give you the third thing that I like about the vehicle is how soft the materials are in the fact that they're using an independent suspension for the front and the rear because it really does change the whole dynamics. I know that's two things. We're going to just list it as one. The three things that I dislike, because I'm a little tall and maybe my buttocks isn't so wide, it's, it's a little bit wide for me in the sense of trying to rest my arms. So when I try to rest my arms, it's almost like I'm sitting like this. So that's just something for someone my size probably is a problem, something to just nitpick on. The second thing that I dislike, you do not have any air vents in the third row. The third thing that I dislike is the fact that they put such great materials. And then on the top area here, it's harder materials. The good thing is they put the soft materials where they're needed. So I do appreciate the way the engineering and the designing is on the vehicle. As for visibility, you can see pretty much to the second row, you got the blind spot monitoring, so you don't really have to worry in that. And this is the type of vehicle that you can kind of get in and out of traffic because it's a turbocharged engine. And as you see, the power is there. As for dynamics, the hood stays kind of sort of flat. It's a little bit on the boaty side, but again, SUV derived. So you're not gonna be expecting something that's gonna be like a sports car feel. For the sensors, they work really good, hand in hand. And what I mean by that is if you are touching the lines, you can feel the vibration in the steering wheel. So I like the fact that they're giving you all that safety capabilities. The CX-9, I feel, does check the boxes on a very positive note because this is something that you can drive in traffic and you're not gonna feel like you're underpowered. Even though it's only 250 horsepower, I think the torque makes it sufficient for what you need it to be. And the fact that you have all the capabilities of a normal SUV. I wish the towing capacity was more at the 5,000 pounds because of the setup. Because it's a front wheel drive, I'll let it slide, but on an all wheel drive basis, it should be 5,000 if it's comparable against the Honda Pilot because that one is 5,000. You are getting more luxury in this and you're gonna save some money too. So that is something to take in consideration. It's a little bit hard to compare it to the Telluride because it doesn't have the length and it doesn't have the ruggedness. I would say this is more direct for pure luxury and the fact that it's just ever so quiet you don't really expect that and it just really makes you think differently and gives you a nice option besides jumping into a high price luxury vehicle you can do that with a luxury Mazda we're gonna take this back to West Shore Mazda go over the reverse camera and wrap this review up switching to reverse you do have full trajectory as you saw for the front and the rear I like how it is the full screen and how it it's just so clean and easy even with the sun directly looking at it. It blocks and pivots it so that way there's no glare. I'd like to thank Noaf here at West Shore Mazda for giving us this 2021 Mazda CX-9 Grand Touring front wheel drive for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details, the merchandise, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.